The Carolina Panthers head up to Washington on Sunday to face off against the upstart Commanders. Are they prepared to win in a shootout? We'll break it all down right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and yes, of course, Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Wednesdays throughout the entirety of the regular season, I'm right here on the show answering your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions. All you got to do is either at me or DM me to get those questions in following the Panthers game on Sunday against Washington and then about 5 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday when I typically record the show. Today's episode of Locked On Panthers is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. It is Friday once again, and the Panthers are sitting, unfortunately, at one and five and heading up to Washington to face off against the surprisingly four and two Washington commanders coming off of a loss against their Beltway neighbors up there in Baltimore, losing to the Ravens. And I mean, it's been surprising to see how well Dan Quinn has done there as his second stint as a head coach. We know him back when he was down in Atlanta. Never forget the Falcons blew a 28 to three lead in a Super Bowl. We can always hang our hats and watching Matt Ryan and the Falcons fall apart that Sunday afternoon in Houston, even if it was against Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, who also ripped out our hearts back in 2003 in that Super Bowl in that same building in Houston. So, God. Crazy moments happening in Super Bowls there at uh, formerly Reliance Stadium, NRG Stadium. Not sure what it's called nowadays, but a big game for Carolina to try to right the ship as there are still winnable games on this schedule ahead of the bye week. This game, certainly, they're going to have to score a ton of points if they're going to win on Sunday. You look at next week, Bo Nix. I mean, I love the story. A guy who... Started at Auburn. His dad had played there in the 90s, really went through some hardships there, went to Oregon, turned things around, but he has not looked good so far. Like that's a game on the road. You can win that one. You come back at home. The Saints are banged up. Cars hurt. Rashid Sahid's hurt. Chris Olave's hurt. That's not the same Saints team we saw week one. And then you go to Germany, you face off against the Giants. They're no good either. So there are winnable games. This one. Right now, eight and a half point spread, not seen by Vegas as a winnable game for Carolina. But the next three weeks certainly are and possibly can turn things around and not have to do a fire sale once we get to the trade deadline in just about 17, 18 days time. So let's break it down here weekly as we do on Fridays. Keys to victory, three things Panthers need to do in order to win this game. And number one, they got to hold up defensively. We've talked about this all week long. The consternation over Jero Vero and his defense. And you know the numbers by now. They're 29th in total defense. There's 32nd in points allowed. The 28th in yards per play allowed. 29th in EPA. 31st in defensive DVOA. 29th in pass defense EPA. 20th, shockingly, in run defense EPA. This has been... A bad defense so far, but there's a reason why. Derrick Brown only played one game this season towards meniscus week one in New Orleans. And even in that game, things didn't go great as the Panthers gave up 47 points, but did not have Derrick Brown for more than one game. And he was injured, it sounds like, for a large portion of that game. Shaq Thompson towards Achilles a couple weeks ago. He's now out for the season. Excuse me, and now likely done in Carolina permanently. Uh, Jadevian Clowney missed last week. Will he be back this week? We will see. DJ Wonham, who was signed as the first edge rusher here in Carolina. It was him, then Caleb on Chase on, who's no longer here. He was the first guy to replace Brian Burns. He has not played a game. They haven't even opened up his window to return from the pup list, physically unable to perform. So I don't know when he's going to play 
at all. And he's supposed to be a key piece. Josie Jules missed the last two games. Maybe he plays this week with that hamstring and groin injury. Dane Jackson, he's been out all season so far of a hamstring, possibly going to come back on Sunday. We'll see. Then Jordan Fuller has missed three games with a hamstring injury of his own, and he's going to miss Sunday as he is in his final week on IR. So, yeah, the numbers are bad, but also look at the amount of injuries and then look at some of the guys that have been injured and question what is their talent level anyways, and there you see one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Now, the Commanders, we talk about how surprising they've been. Jaden Daniels has been outstanding so far this season. The Commanders are number one in offensive EPA, number one in passing offense EPA, and only number four in rushing offense EPA. So this has been a top five offense so far this season and looking just overall at expected points added, the best offense in the National Football League and now facing off against the worst defense in the National Football League in terms of points allowed so far this season. So they're going to give up points. They just got to find a way to potentially get some turnovers, hold them to a field goal instead of six points and win in the red zone. The numbers last week bear out to be four of eight for Atlanta in the red zone, three for three in the first half, but not as successful in the second half. Now, a couple of those was a kneel get down to end the game. The drive before that, the Falcons didn't even want to throw the ball on third and six as they were just trying to run down the clock. We're already up 35 to 20, just needed a field goal to go ahead and just salt that game away, go up three scores. So really it's four for six, which still is not great. The Panthers are now no longer the worst red zone defense. They're now the second worst red zone defense. That still needs to improve if they're going to win this game on Sunday there at it's not FedEx field anymore. I forget what they they changed the name up there in Landover, Maryland, but if they're going to win, they're going to have to play. I mean, obviously better defense, but just don't give up a scoring drive on every single possession, which could be the possibility to happen on Sunday. But I think that they, well, I don't know. I hope that they'll be better. We'll see on Sunday against Washington. Number two, the way Panthers, the Panthers going to be able to win games moving forward is going to be by winning in shootouts. You look at the game against Las Vegas, they scored 36 points. Next week, the defense gave up 34, offense scored 24. The next week after that, the defense gave up, Lord, I already forgot, 34 or 36, uh, rather, to Chicago, and the offense scored 10. Then last week, we saw also... 38 points, not great. So you're going to have to score points if they're going to win this game. And fortunately for this offense, they're getting another defense that is susceptible to giving up big yards and giving up some points. As the commanders are 26 in defensive EPA so far, they're 27th in passing defense EPA and 24th in rushing defense EPA. We talked to David Harrison of Locked On Commanders yesterday, and he talked about how concerned, especially now Jonathan Allen looks like he's done for the year and possibly done for good there in Washington. He's out for the rest of the season. How are they going to be able to stop the run when Chuba Hubbard has been outstanding? The Panthers also have been a really good run in the football. They're ninth in the NFL in yards per play uh, per attempt. Sorry, yards per attempt rushing. They have a rushing success rate of 54.6. Looking at Chuba Hubbard, he leads the NFL in a rushing success rate among players of at least 50 attempts so far. Kareem Hunt technically leads it, but he only has 41 carries so far this season. Chuba Hubbard has twice as many of that, and he has been phenomenal when the Panthers have been dedicated to running the football. And it's starting to feel like Dave Canales is telling us all offseason they're going to be stubborn about running the ball. It was a lie, as the Panthers have not necessarily been that. And there have been reasons like not staying on the field, time and score, totally understand all of that. To a certain extent, but last week you're down 28 to 20. Chuba Hubbard got you down the field. Why take the ball out of his hands, even if it was only a two yard run there on first down, and then throw it to all people? Ian Thomas, which then gets picked off. Andy Dalton got to do a better job situationally there. Ian Thomas also, I mean, we've been saying this for years be better, but this is who he is at this point in time. So don't put yourself in a situation on second and eight where you're throwing the ball down the field to Ian Thomas. Instead, once you hand it off, Chuba Hubbard, where you're likely going to get. Six yards, and that would be a successful run like he's been doing and leading the NFL in for the most part all season long. The last thing the Panthers got to do, and they just have not done it so far in five of their six games. Let's take care of the football. They have one game so far this season where they did not turn the ball over. That was on the road against Las Vegas, and what do you know? That's the only game the Panthers have won so far this season. So it's not a coincidence that when you take care of the football, you win games. Now, this is a much better team they're facing on the road than that game in Las Vegas. But understand, if they turn it over, knowing just how good Jaden Daniels has been and how good this offense is, the Panthers will not win this game on Sunday. 
They are giving the ball away 1.7 times per game. That's tied 27th in the NFL. The Commanders are giving the ball up 0.5, which is third in the NFL. They don't turn the football over, and that's helping them start off to a 4-2 and two start where the Panthers turn it over, and now they're 1-5. and five. And the problem here is not just that they turn it over. It's that the defense, like last year, stinks when it comes to sudden change. And last week, yeah, it's a sudden change situation, but Atlanta had to drive 84 yards down the field to go down and go up two scores, and this defense offered zero resistance. I can understand the argument that that pick took the wind out of their sails. I don't care. You got to nut up at some point and stop the man in front of you instead of letting Tyler Algier literally drag defenders 15 yards down the field. Like, that's unacceptable. Stand up, be a man, tackle, make a play, and get the offense the ball back. That's how you play football. That's complimentary football. Turnover is not great, but standing up and getting the ball back to your offense, letting that team go three and out or punt it back to them, that's what you do defensively to help out your offense when they make a mistake, when you're the one making all the mistakes and the main reason why this team is one in five heading into this game on Sunday against Washington. And the big thing is opponents so far have 51 points off turnovers. The Panthers have nine, and that goes back to complimentary football. The defense, not great in sudden change. The offense, whenever the defense actually does a good thing, refuses to score a touchdown. Instead, they settle for three points. That's not good enough. When your opponents are scoring seven, you're scoring three. As we saw against Cincinnati, that can be the difference in the game. And it certainly will be again on Sunday if they turn it over. But if they get the ball, they have to capitalize against this Dan Quinn defense that can be aggressive, have to get the ball in the end zone if they're able to get any turnovers and win that turnover battle on Sunday. So we'll see if they're able to do that. But got to take care of the football have to keep up offensively. I do question whether this team is equipped to win any shootout. Deontay Johnson is excellent. Xavier Leggett has shown some really bright spots so far as he's growing into that role. Looks like uh, Jalen Coker's taking over Jonathan Mingo's spot. That's still a lot to ask of this offense that needs to be more run heavy than they have been. But when it's Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett, and Jalen Coker, two rookie receivers of myriad expectations, it's still a lot to ask this team to go out there and have to score 35 points because of what the Panthers are giving up. You're asking them to go score five touchdowns every single week just to have an opportunity. That's not ideal. So they got to find a way to keep up offensively, but really they got to hold up defensively, find a way to get some stops, get some takeaways, put the offense in a better position. And yes, the offense has to capitalize. That's how they can win on Sunday on the road against the commanders injury report. Looking at it on Wednesday and how the Panthers are looking heading into Sunday. We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. For most of us that like collecting cards, the idea of spending two grand or more on a Patrick Mahomes rookie card just isn't in the cards. I love collecting, but that's some serious money to drop. Thanks to Slab Packs from ArenaClub.com. Now it's possible to score gym mints for a fraction of their retail price. Every card that I listed was hit from last week's Arena Club Slab Pack drop. Arena Club is the only repack that provides real value, a complete view of all possible cards, and clear hit rates for each one. Arena Club Slab Packs are revolutionizing the repack game with transparency. After your pools are revealed, they'll immediately be placed in your showroom for safekeeping, selling, trading, or auction. The Arena Club grading process is accurate, fast, and transparent with a full-grade rationale provided an explanation of how your cards were scored. Whether buying, selling, trading, or displaying, Arena Club is the card-collecting platform you have to check out. Right now, you can get 10% off your first slab pack or card purchase by going to arenaclub.com slash LockedOnNFL and use code LockedOnNFL. That's arenaclub.com slash LockedOnNFL, code LockedOnNFL for 10% off your first purchase. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is the best way to get action on sports in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. 
And yes, of course, the old North State here of North Carolina. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinion to through real money all season long on Prize Picks. Download the app today and use code Lockdown NFL to get $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. That's code Locked On NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Price picks run your game. Uh, let's take a look at the Panthers injury report. And I'm recording the show a little earlier than I typically do. I like to do it either late on Thursday afternoon or on Friday morning, but I'm heading to a wedding down in Charleston on Sunday. So heading actually today here on Thursday, but I got it on Sunday, which means no, I will not be here live on YouTube following the game on Sunday. You have to hear from me on the Monday afternoon after I get back. And you can see, got to cut, no longer look transient here on YouTube. So this is an injury report I'm looking at from Wednesday. Things will change on Thursday as the Panthers, as I'm recording right now at about 1.15 on Thursday, October 17th. They're taking the practice field right now. So maybe I can check out Twitter as I'm recording this and see if there's any updates from some of the folks that are there covering the team. But as you listen to this recording, don't have those updates. And let's go over what at least was seen on Wednesday as nine Panthers were held out uh, practice. Now, some of those were just resting like Chuba Hubbard, and some of them were actually injuries. Looking first at the linebacker spot here in Carolina, Claude Cherilis was at the start the last two weeks of Josie Jewell, Albe groin and hamstring injury. He did not practice on Wednesday with a hamstring. Josie Jewell also dealing with that hamstring and groin did not practice on Wednesday. Then John Radigan, he has a knee slash illness and did not practice on Wednesday. I wonder if that's more illness than knee that held him out in practice on Wednesday. Now on Thursday, don't know, as I'm recording this earlier, if either one of those guys were out there. But it feels like Klon is going to have to be available because I don't know if Josie Jules DMP on Wednesday, if he's going to be ready to go dealing with both of those muscle injuries. So the hope is Klon Charles is ready to go. If not, then it may fall on Chandler Wooten. Or possibly John Radigan if he is healthy. Either way, the Panthers are just banged up there at the linebacker spot. They did sign an outside linebacker, but they have not brought back any inside linebacker help over the last couple of weeks. I don't recall as – let me just fact check myself real quick because I don't think I've seen them make any more moves. No, so – We'll see. And you also look at the practice squad right now, like Jackson Mitchell, somebody who they could potentially bring up if they'd like to, uh, but not a lot of options. Shaq Quarterman, he's also on the practice squad, so that's an experienced player. So those possibly are options of guys who could be uh, elevated. I would think Quarterman would be the one more likely to be elevated off of the practice squad. The Panthers want to go in that direction, but right now, Questions there at the inside linebacker spot. Trevin Wallace, he's still healthy, ready to go as he takes over that main role as a green dot heading into Sunday's game against Washington for the third week in a row. Offensive line-wise, played well, even without Taylor Moten. And as we know, Austin Corbett's out for the rest of the season. Brady Christensen, the third highest-graded offensive player for the Panthers on Sunday in that loss against Atlanta. Then you look at the right tackle spot. Yash Nyman was the fifth highest graded player for the Panthers, filling in for Taylor Moten, who's 104 start and 120 game play. The Iron Man streak ended last week in that loss to the Falcons. He's still dealing with the tricep, did not practice on Wednesday. Dave Canales spoke to the media on Wednesday about that, saying they still want to get the strength back in that muscle before they can put Taylor Moten back out there. So feels like it's a little bit too soon for that to happen. So he's likely going to miss his second straight game, and Josh Nyman will be in there at right tackle. And here's the thing. Panthers right now looking at PFF and their pass-blocking stat. They're number five in the NFL. Understand this. This team has been a top-five pass-blocking offensive line so far, and they've had to play Chandler Zavala for a half against the Raiders and then for a full game the next week against Cincinnati as Damian Lewis is out. They are now without Austin Corbett for the rest of the season and had to play Brady Christensen for a half last the week prior in Chicago and then all of last week. And then Josh Nyman, kind of similar situation, played a half in Chicago, started last week, and still top five pass blocking, which is outstanding to see. And it sucks, too, because that's somebody – Send me a video uh, on my DMs there on Twitter uh, at Julian Council, by the way. And it was a video from Brian Baldinger of the NFL Network who does all these baldy breakdowns, hashtag baldy breakdowns. And he was breaking down the Panthers' offensive line and just how good of a unit it's become. And I was telling that guy, it's just so unfortunate. One of the biggest concerns over the last 
five years seems to be fixed. Yet the Panthers quarterback situation is still in flux long term. They have all these injuries defensively, injuries on offense. It's like, man, they finally get the offensive line fixed. And then all these other issues have kept this team from winning. But that's something to build upon as they do have an offensive line that has some guys that are locked up. And we'll have to see what their decisions that they make after the season as far as of Christensen, but really Corbett as well. And just in general at the center position, a couple guys windows are open. As we know, Jonathan Brooks had his window open from the non-football injury list after tearing his ACL last November at Texas. He is limited on Wednesday. And it's going to take some time before he plays. We'll talk about that here in a moment when we should expect his debut to be now that they've opened up that 21 day practice window. Jaden Cromedy, also a draft pick six rounder out of Mississippi state. He's been on IR of an ankle. He was a full participant on Wednesday. So was Sam Franklin, who broke his foot on the third day of training camp. He was a full participant on Wednesday. And Cromie's a guy who spent more time, at least out there during training camp. So I wonder if he would come back quicker than Franklin. Franklin isn't a better is is a veteran player, but didn't really have a lot of time out there at practice during training camp. So we'll see how that plays out. Felipe Franks has actually been excellent when it comes to uh, kickoff. Uh, coverage so far that's this season which is very helpful so having him and then sam franklin out there would only boost if the special teams and franklin of course is one of the team captains they are special teams guys so those two were full participants and we'll see what their status is heading into friday as the panthers prepare to head up to washington dane jackson uh getting close to him needing to come off of that or he's gonna be done for the rest of the season full participant on wednesday Feels like this has got to be the week, especially facing off a really good pass defense. This has got to be the week where he makes his debut here in Carolina. So we'll see. Jadavion Clowney did not practice on Wednesday, missed last week of a shoulder injury. He did feel like he was going to be able to play at least earlier in the week, and that turned out to not be the case as he was ruled out on Friday of last week. So still dealing with that shoulder. The Panthers did sign Jacoby Windman off of the Steelers practice squad on Tuesday to provide more help there at outside linebacker Shaq Lawson. He's also an option for Carolina. Marquise Haynes is now on the active roster. So we'll see how that plays out for Carolina as they got to find a way to get some pressure. And we talked about it with David Jack, David Harrison, rather, of Locked On Commanders yesterday about just the amount of times they've blitzed so far this season and they're not getting home. If they can get home before, that would be great. And it's going to come down to guys like Clowney, like Lawson, like DJ Johnson and Charles Harris and all the rest to get home. And Charles Harris actually graded pretty well last week. I thought they got more pressure than they typically have, but it did not lead to a turnover or it did didn't lead to one turnover that had nothing to do with the pressure, but it did not lead to any sacks last week of Kirk of Kirk cousins rather um, others that are dealing with some stuff. Ashan Robinson knee. He was injured last week, did not practice on Wednesday that would be a tough loss as he is certainly their best defensive tackle now that Derek Brown's out for the rest of the season. Deontay Johnson ankle did not practice as well on Wednesday. He was limited all last week with an ankle injury two weeks ago on a Wednesday. He was also a DMP, but then was limited the rest of the week before playing on the road against Chicago. So I think this is something where he's going to be fine. We, he's getting asked about this every week. Now it's getting asked about this every week. Just seems like to be a nagging ankle injury. And because of NFL rules, they have to always put that out there and be transparent. Then Tommy Trimble, who's working his way uh, from concussion protocol, limited on Wednesday. And also Andrew Rame limited on Wednesday. Another candidate potentially to play at center if the Panthers need him to. So that's an injury update heading into this Sunday at Washington. A couple of questions I have heading to Sunday's game. When will Jonathan Brooks make his debut? And how active will the Panthers be as the trade deadline approaches? We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And speaking of bets, let's take a look at the Panthers line on Sunday, 4.05 Eastern time up there in Landover, Maryland. They are staying steady at an eight and a half point underdog. So maybe you want to get it plus eight and a half plus three forty money line. Then the over under is down to 51 and a half. And I think it's going to be a lot of points scored. You know, the Panthers defense is giving up about 35 points per game. Panthers offense going to need that same amount 
more probably in order to win on Sunday. So I think they're going to shatter that over like they did last week when they welcome home the Atlanta Falcons. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. I have two questions heading into this week seven matchup against the Washington Commanders as it pertains to your Carolina Panthers, my Carolina Panthers, our Carolina Panthers. Question number one, when will Jonathan Brooks make his debut? Now, he was limited on Wednesday, and Dave Canal said it's certainly going to be something they take week to week, and they have to see him play comfortably at full speed. So, no, he's not going to play this Sunday. I would be surprised if he plays next Sunday on the road against Denver. It feels like the first time you would see him, potentially, if it's going to be earlier in that 21-day practice window, window would be in a couple of weeks against a banged-up Saints team here at home at Bank of America Stadium. And I think it would be great for him to make his debut at home. I also wonder, if they don't do it then, then they would have to make him debut over in Munich against the Giants, which would be a pretty incredible place to start your NFL career. Couldn't play the first nine games, but here I am. In Germany, first German Germany game ever for the Carolina Panthers, and I'm playing in that game. That could be the case for the, for uh, Jonathan Brooks. I was a little surprised though that they uh, open up the window. I know Dave Canales sounded pretty confident on Monday that Jonathan Brooks was ready. They just had to sit down, and discuss it amongst themselves if that was the right decision to be made. I just thought that if you feel like he's ready to at least start practicing again and knowing that he has not been out there on the field at all for you. And I'm sure he's doing his best to condition himself, but totally different. Why not just wait till next week, have him practice leading up to Denver, have him practice leading up to the Saints game. Same thing with Munich and with the Giants and then have the bye. Then after that, have him ready to go as you get ready to face the Chiefs. I just thought maybe that would give him more time as he is again, Hasn't been out at, on the practice field at all. Has never practiced for Carolina. Same thing like whenever DJ one has his window open. We'll see when that's going to be. I just thought that may make sense. But now it does open up the possibility the Panthers may be willing to possibly move on from Miles Sanders as Chuba Hubbard clearly is RB1 here in Carolina. And then when Brooks comes in, we'll see if that turns out to be a 1A, 1B situation think it should just be a one situation and then a two situation with those two guys the rest of the way whenever Brooks is made active. Uh, so is Miles Sanders now expendable, which leads me to my second question. How active will the Panthers be at the trade deadline? And we'll start off there at running back with Jonathan Brooks coming back. The Panthers drafted him there in the second round. And if you're going to open up that window now and you want him to play this season, you already have Chuba, who I don't think they're going to try and trade. Miles Sanders would make some sense. There is still money left on that deal for another team, but they would like to keep him around. Now there is an out in his contract after this season. So Carolina can move on after this year, which I expect him to do if he does stick around. And I would think that the next team that would acquire him, it would be the same case. Now the Panthers did trade Miles Sanders, whose name has been bandied about, by the way, I've seen reports on ESPN, I believe the athletic as well that have mentioned Miles Sanders as a trade candidate uh, for the Carolina Panthers. Once we get closer to the deadline, there will be a dead cap hit of $2.95 million. The Panthers moved off of him and I'm guessing over the cap and then spot track don't really break it down for you as far as how much money Carolina Panthers have to pay in the rest of the year, as far as the salary goes and salary cap, but the remainder of his 2024 salary, which is all guaranteed, I'm guessing would probably go to the acquiring team or maybe Carolina has to hold on to that just based off of the contract that was given to him. But he's again, there's going to be an out in the deal after the season anyway. So that's a possibility for Carolina as far as somebody they could trade. And I imagine they're only getting like at best a six round pick and you take it if you can, because you can always package a six round pick and with earlier picks to move up. If the Panthers need to do that, come to draft uh, later on, I guess next year in April, uh, but two other guys that we're thinking about, too, are the wide receivers, Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen. And we talked about earlier this week on the mailbag, I had questions being like, should it be a fire sale now? Or should the Panthers or the Panthers being crazy if they want to trade Deontay Johnson? I know Kurt was asking that on the mailbag. Uh, it makes no sense to him. And here's kind of a situation, though. Like, they're one in five. One in five football team. Vegas thinks they're going to be one and six. And I'm guessing Vegas thinks that they're going to be losing the other games too in the upcoming weeks, which I think they have an opportunity to win at Denver. I think they can win at home and I think they can win in Germany as well. So winnable games. We'll see 
what happens. But right now they're one and five, and in all likelihood, based off it, we're just going to go off of Vegas. They're going to be one and six after this week. If you're one and six, and you traded for a guy, Deontay Johnson, to be your number one receiver and you already benched the quarterback who you were hoping he was going to be able to grow with and really elevate, and then Andy Dalton also is a free agent. So Deontay Johnson does not know who's going to be the quarterback next year in Carolina. The Panthers can sit here and tell him it's going to be Bryce Young, but we saw that Deontay, like Adam Thielen, certainly didn't seem to be uh, that happy with the way Bryce is playing the first couple weeks of the season. I don't know how enamored he would be about that idea as a free agent to come back to Carolina if Bryce is going to be the guy, but I don't think Bryce is going to be the guy next year. And it's hard to know whether Andy Dalton's going to be the guy or really should be. Should the Panthers go get a younger veteran quarterback to either push Bryce or be the stop stop gap for whoever is going to be next here in Carolina as a young quarterback who will hopefully be the franchise. I don't know. We'll see. So big question is that quarterback and you're potentially going to be one in six, maybe one in seven, whenever they want to make the decision. Like, why would he re-sign here? Like, put yourself in these players' shoes. And I know as a fan, it's hard to do that. And you look at the fact the Panthers trade away DJ Moore, and it's terrible that they did that. And I hate it at the time. I hate it now. And I get that you hate it as well. And you want to find that replacement. Like, Deontay Johnson is not as good as DJ Moore, but he certainly is much better than what the Panthers had last year. And that's no shade Adam Thielen, who I think is a good player. But he's not at that. It's not 2017 anymore, y'all. So I get all of that. Totally do. And a good thing, at least, is you have Leggett looking good so far, Coker stepping up as well. Like there were two young guys to point to and see, all right, we can grow with those guys. Just gotta add somebody else. But you would like for it to, of course, be Deontay Johnson. But man, if they're one and six, one and seven, they bench Bryce. Andy's future is up in limbo after the season. Like, why would he want to be here? He's 28 years old and getting younger. And he's going to get an opportunity to get paid again. This is going to be the last time he can really get a big contract, likely, in his NFL career. He's coming from Pittsburgh, where he never had a losing season. Yeah, he had bad quarterback play, but the team was never bad. And now he's on a bad team. You got to put yourself in this situation. Like, if you're at work, you get transferred to a different city within your company, and you're working on a team that is way worse than the one you're working at, and they're not making as much money, and your success is limited like, wouldn't you want to find a way out to maybe go to a different company or a better situation? Probably. So I know it's maybe not that simple, but in this situation, it kind of feels like it is. Panthers unlikely to hold him hostage. I don't think he is worth what the franchise tag would be for a wide receiver. Just to let it play out. They can always go back and re-sign him after the year. We just look at the situation and let's be honest with ourselves. Like if you were Deontay Johnson, what about the situation moving forward in Carolina would make you want to be here? Uh, and then Adam Thielen, he's eligible to come off IR next week. Uh, maybe it'll happen. We'll see. 2025 dead cap hit, though. The Panthers want to trade him at $5 million. He does have an out in this contract. About $3 million Panthers can save if they keep him on the roster and then cut him pre-June 1, and it's $6 million post-June 1. So we'll see what they want to do. Uh, and the other team that acquires him also has that out in his contract. He is 34. I don't know if the team in the NFL is looking to keep him around at 35. In fact, he's coming off a hamstring. Also kind of hurts the ability for the Panthers to trade him. I think with what we saw this past week where a decent amount, it looks like a third or fourth is what you're looking at for the wide receiver market so far. It's been set by the Jets trading for Devontae Adams and then the Bills trading for Amari Cooper, if the Panthers can get a third round pick or fourth, you kind of got to take that, right? So we'll see how it plays out, but I'm very curious to see how active they're going to be. I don't think they're going to stand bad. I do think that they will be sellers. And if they're one and six, one and seven, they will rightfully so be sellers at the trade deadline. Don't sit here and celebrate it at all. I do not. Would love to see Deontay Johnson stick around and be here with this rebuild and the Panthers be able to have him be their guy. Would love to see it. We'll love to see Thielen stick around as well, but got to be real for ourselves and just the reality of business and where the Panthers are at. This is a rebuilding organization, and you don't keep aging players around just because, you know, they are good right now, and maybe they can help you next year. Like, who knows when you're actually going to be competitive. So we'll see. 
All right. Um, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast for our Locked On Podcast and Network host by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all subscribe, follow the show free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Wednesday of next week, I'll be back answering your weekly Wednesday mailback questions. So either at me or DM me to get those questions into me now. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole as always and forever. Keep pounding. And I will not be here on Sunday live to do the show as I typically do going to be in Charleston for a wedding. I asked y'all for permission earlier this season. The Panthers lost 47 to 10. I was like, you know what? Yeah, probably going to do this. Now they're one in five. I do feel guilty. I hate to not be here for y'all whenever a game's happening or if there's any big breaking news, because it's going to be different in the next couple of weeks. Got to work with NASCAR a couple of weeks from now when the saints are playing. Munich will be different as I will not be recording as I quickly do. So I, I hate that to be the case, but you know, life events happen and you know, can't let work always get in the way. So I'll be back on Monday, do that live show. And then we'll get right back on track for the rest of the week. So just stick, stay tuned for Monday. Be patient with me. You'll get my thoughts. Follow the Panthers commanders game sometime on Monday afternoon. Have a good weekend.